G'day, I'm Mark Boxer, and welcome to another episode of Ryko Workshop Heroes, and today I'm somewhere really cool, KRE Race Engines. Oh, here we are. G'day, how are you going? All right, let's go see if we can find Ken. Ah, g'day, mate, how are you going? Good, thanks, Joff. Oh, not too bad, busy day? Yeah, not too bad, yeah, not too bad. Oh, let's see where you go going out the back. Come through and have a look. This is our uh, assembly area. Where the guys can build the, the sprint car engines or supercar engines, depending on um, what's what's going on at the time. So what do you got in here? Yeah, so this is a 410 sprint car engine. Yeah, we sort of, um, we build 60, 70 of these a year. That's our, one of our main parts of our business. Nice. Eight throttle yeah. body intake there. Yeah, between 850, 920 horsepower. And uh, how long does it take to get one of these built from sort of a get-go, just coming in as a bare block? Normally a week. Time it comes in on the Monday, we'll strip it. Um, get, have, it, have it in the machine shop Tuesday, and then the guys can start assembling. So, um, like in the off season when you've got 20 motors here, obviously they get held up a little bit waiting on parts and things like that. But um, yeah, normally most engines do turn around four or five days. All right, so it's a 410 sprint car engine. I mean, um, you mentioned, you know, there's like a conventional small block, but obviously a lot of what's going on on the front here with the oil system. I mean, explain to me what the difference with the oil system you've got here on this engine is and how important that is for what you're doing with these. Yeah, like most engines have a belt-driven uh, dry sun pump off the side, um, you know, whether it's a pro stock or a supercar or something like that, but um, NASCAR engine. With a sprint car, it's driven off the camshaft, so it's basically, you know, your team can change that motor in 15, 20 minutes in a car. You now bang, make the next heat race. So, so you've got a five-stage oil pump, um, obviously the hard line, which feeds oil to the engine. You've got a dry sump tank, um, which holds about nine litres of oil. This one's a bit slightly bigger tank with the bigger pump. And then obviously you've got your three scavenge lines out of your, out of your oil pan, up into the pump, back into the tank, and then there's also one out of the, um, the back which has a tube through the middle and comes out the front and, and goes into the pump, so it sucks from the back of the valley. Um, yeah, and the oil system, you know, these things will make probably 10, 12 inches of vacuum, where an iron block engine will make 20, but with that size pump on it, you, you at least create a, a um, vacuum in the oil pan, which helps with the ring seal and makes it a little bit more power. Now you've mentioned uh, we've got the new Syntec filter on here and you've been doing a lot of testing and work with Ryko to develop these. I just happen to have one of these right here, which is for the new Gen 3 engine, I believe. Yes, yeah, yes. We'll, that'll fit that and also the current supercar engines. So we'll run us through some of the new developments with these filters and how good they are. Yeah, I think with the, the synthetic media that the Ryko has been working on um, and made some changes with the, um, you know, the amount of holes in the filter and where the um, the valve sits, and also the, um, the the thickness of the casing, it's made to filter you know more robust item. Um, you got you know higher higher flow with less pressure drop, and that's a that's a big gain, especially in, in, in especially in the supercar stuff where every horsepower is important. And these engines where you got you know too much power that the filtration side of it's very important. We got tiny fragments of titanium valve retainer and all those little things that come out of an engine now that will be you know collected in the oil filter. Um, you don't have to run a course of micron to not worry about the, the pressure drop. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, uh, the amount of effort that goes into one of these things here, if that part of the engine's not up to the task, then you pretty much ruin the rest of the engine, haven't you? So No, exactly, and that's what we've seen in the past, where you, know, you can have oiling system issues and you, you fail the engine, which is anywhere, you know, ten to $50,000. Um, and as said, with, in a road car, where if, you know, if you've got you know, these longer service intervals, you know, the better filtration you have, it just looks after the motor better. Oh, absolutely, and I mean, you know, one thing now looking at this though is that I'm pretty keen to uh, see this run. So uh, any chance we can chuck this on the dyno and see yeah, what it does? You we'll said it was going to make 900, so I'm going to hold you to that. that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll give it a go and see what happens. All right, let's make it happen. Well, uh, let's have a look around and see what else you got. In this bay in here, we've got a, um, an LS, just one of the uh, new sprint car motors. It's the cheaper version. They're, they're trying to build up a class where, you know, for 25 grand, you can you can go and run this at 600 horsepower and still be competitive even in a class where a new 410, you know, they're about $90,000. Yeah, wow. So it's a big difference. 
Um, and the lap times we see, they're only you know half a second, three quarters of a second off the off the big engines. That's like a CT525, which is GM make, yep. um, which is a circle track engine. It's 525 horsepower on petrol, and they're about you know, 590 on, on alcohol. So. Yeah, and I mean, it pretty much looks, aside from the intake, um, you know, with the methanol set up and everything, it looks pretty mm. much like a Commodore engine, really. It is, yeah. It's just, it's just got a camshaft, a, a circle truck sump, ATI balancer, and then, yeah, the methanol injection has an MSD box, a circle truck box. It's limited to 7,000. So, yeah, it's a good budget engine that, if they heard it, a quarter of the price to even fix. So it gets guys into the speedway without having to spend the big money on the 410s, and then they can obviously move up to that if they, if they want to pursue mm. their driving career further. Well, my car's got an LS in it, so I think we should just push this one outside, put it in the back of the car, and um, yeah, when I get home... <laughs> yeah, just the fuel economy might be a little bit of an issue with the methanol. <laughs> Finding a petrol station that sells methanol. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. All right, let's yeah, keep looking around. No worries. Oh, I can see some cylinder heads and bits and pieces on the bench there. Yeah, Mark, this is where we strip them. So this one, we pull the motors apart. Like that's a 14 engine that's come apart yesterday. So that'll be stripped be reported on, yeah, measure everything, work out what's worn, what's not, so we can um, do a parts list up for it. We tear the oil pumps apart, you know, cylinder heads, magnetos, everything gets pulled apart and serviced. You can do it quick if you don't, but that's really what they need to, to do them properly. Yeah, because they're pretty much like in the sprint cars, it's pretty much just like a whole deal, isn't yeah, it, really? Yeah, all tank, yeah. everything's on the engine, back yep. the fuel pumps off the back of the camshaft, so it's just, it's a really self-contained engine that everything's there and, and um, you do it, but yeah, it's like all the parts here, you know, you know con rods, everything gets crack tested, all yep. the titanium valves, we, we mileage everything, so we all have the um, paperwork with all the, the lists of how many laps they've done. Um, supercars, we do it off, off, off you know, kilometres. And then, yeah, we strip the oil pumps, make sure they're all um, look good internally and there's no issues that we put the um, new parts in if need be. And I guess to be a little bit engine techy and nerdy, like going through some of the bits like the pistons and rods and stuff like that, I mean, how does this compare to like a typical street V8 engine? Oh, sort of same architecture, obviously better conrod, they don't obviously they don't have to dry some pump, but um, yeah, it's a 13 degree cylinder head, you know, road car stuff's obviously 23 or for they'll go to a 15 or an 18 degree, but um, on the performance engines, but so you just got to have, you know, you got wrist pins with the you know, DLC yeah, right. coating on them, so yeah. it's just all the things you need to, to make these engines live. Yeah, and I don't think a lot of people realise too, you know, people talk about horsepower and stuff like that, like that's the most important part, but I mean, these are doing like 30 laps and pretty much most of the time it's almost flat throttle, isn't it? Yeah, so. yeah you get somewhere like Perth on those big tracks where if the track's heavy, mm. yeah, they don't lift off this roll. Yeah. They might back pedal a little bit in the corner just to help if the track slickens a little bit. As the track slows down, they'll, they'll be half three quarters throttle, but mm. they always see high RPM. Well, uh, I guess uh, let's have a look down the, uh, the back there and see yeah, what happens in what, there. Um, what goes on down there. Yeah, so this is our machine shop where we do probably 80% of the machine work in-house. Yeah, there's some cylinder heads. That's for the uh, new Gen 3 yep. supercar engine, LS9 cylinder head. So um, just trying to run the, you know, as many factory parts as we can on that engine. So that's basically the LS9 runs a titanium intake valve, sodium exhaust valve. So we'll probably go to a titanium exhaust valve, but um, yeah, basically a factory factory CNC ported head. So yeah, wow. a quarter of the price of the, of the current heads that we run now. So. And then um, all the cylinder heads, so we've got a new one for cutting all the valve seats. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Touch yeah. screen, so you program all your valve angles in and then it'll go down and cut the seats to um, whatever settings you put in. With the old type of machines with the form tool, you'd ha you have your angles cut on the cutter. Yeah. With this, you just put in whatever design you want, so it works in quite well. We've got one of the um, Rotlef 75 Hones, so it's sort of all basically similar to CNC, where you'll set up one cylinder, hone, the, hone that cylinder, get the size, then the machine will go along and hone each cylinder, rotate the block by itself and then do the other cylinders. And we do, we do a lot of honing for a lot of other people. That's an LS for a customer. We yep. do, we do some other stuff for people. So, so we've got that, we've got a crack tester. We do a crankshaft balancing. You know, a bit of weld up blocks and heads down the back there. Yep. Just general mill and lathe, like anything. We get Duns CAD drawn and made on CNC machines at race teams or uh, other businesses, so. And I reckon I can hear a V8 engine in the background. Yeah, that's What's the that? old Gen 3. Now, is that all top secret or are we at the... No, 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 you'll have, have a look. Sticky beak and have a look around. Right. Come and have a look. So this is our um, dyno rooms. We've got two, two dyno cells next to each other. Oh, yeah. One with the sprint car engine on it, and this is the um, cams just doing the second testing of the Gen 3 engine. So we've had it on there really since February. Yep. It's 
It's been through a few iterations, 6.2 litre, 5.7 litre. So now it's got the, um, we changed the front of the motor just because it had to fit into the into the Camaro okay. compared to when we tested in the TA2 car because it was left hand drive. And then all new software from Motec, so we're just going through that now. And then it'll, it said it'll come off and, so once that's done, then we'll, um, January we'll go test yep. in, the, in the real cars. And I guess, you know, just from the engine dyno point of view, I mean, um, for people that haven't seen an engine dyno before, give us a rundown of how the whole setup works and what it does yeah, compared so to running a sort of like a chassis dyno. Yeah, so this is room, it's obviously all soundproof, you know, as best you can have it. And then everything's, you know, the ECU and then the dyno software, you've got two lots of um, information. And then um, it basically runs off a water brake and you can, you can um, do all your full throttle runs, part throttle runs. You can't do decel and stuff on there, but you leave that for the car, but um, yep. pretty much get the engine within 90% of where it needs to be. can see a bunch of spare parts in here. Yeah, right? we put a little pair of spare parts upstairs out of the way, so we keep a fairly large range of bits and pieces, mainly for the um, sprint cars, you know, the titanium valves, yep. crankshafts, you know, pistons, all the small stuff, ARP, all the little small bits and pieces, but yeah, mainly for our super cars and sprint car stuff, so we don't keep generic bits for everything, because. We'll buy certain head gas and we'll buy 50 at a time. And you sort of need, if I'm on the dyno downstairs and I'm, I'm dyno a sprint car and it's got a worn throttle shaft, I'll just come up here and I'll grab a Engler or Kinsler throttle shaft and put it in the engine. And if I had to then, oh geez, I'll get an order on for America. Yeah. So we try and keep all the bits that when we're dynoing, we just come up and grab it and it doesn't hold up the process of, of dynoing the engine. Oh, brilliant. Now I hear there is a couple of race cars out the back. Yeah, we've got a couple of sprint cars. Back over there and have a look. All right, so we're in the workshop now looking at a uh, 410 sprint car. Now, obviously it's mostly roll cage and this beautiful 410 engine, but how does a sprint car work compared to like your typical sort of race car? Yeah, they're sort of really just a billy car with a big engine, but you know, they're a, the frame obviously has a lot to do with how the car transfers its grip to the track. You know, you've got four torsion bars, which are basically your springs, bird cages on the rear end, which, which control the, your radius rods, or the angle of how it plants the tyres into the track and obviously you have the big wing for the downforce. You know, when you've got 900 horsepower and a you know, 650 kilo car, it's sorta, if the track's heavy, it's, it's, it sets you back in the seat pretty good, but, but predominantly the track slows down and then you've got too much power, and how do you control the wheel spin to, to keep the, the traction there? And I guess the other thing too is, and most people don't realise that you know, your engine's here, but right behind it, normally you'd have a gearbox or a transmission, but uh, right there, there's just pretty no. much a tail shaft. Correct, yeah, you just gotta, Universal joint in the back of the engine, a drive yep. shaft straight into the diff, and, and that's it, torque tube, which then connects to the motor plate. And I guess, you know, with this too being um, methanol, and you know, typically methanol engines use a lot more fuel, I mean, how big's the tank and how much would it use in, say, like an A main and 30 laps? Depends, that's a, that's a 33 gallon tank, and it's got a little pot down the bottom to help for the, um, so you can run them quite low. Um, it depends, I mean, if the track's hooked up and heavy, you'll, you'll go, like, say the Warrnambool Classic, which is 40 laps. If you haven't got one of them tanks on, you'll run out of fuel. What would you say would be, say, three top highlights for you over the years with, you know, people winning with your engines and vehicles and um, so forth? I think, I mean, Bathurst, we've been lucky enough, should know, I think, I think we've won that nine times. Probably the first one with Lansley and that, when, after Brock died. Um, that was good. First one was back with Stones back in 97, 98 with Bridie, but I was only new then, just sort of turned up that year, so I was just building engines, but you know, didn't know much about it at all. And then, um, yeah, the Warrnambool Classic, which is like the, you know, the Knoxville Nationals of Australia, and we've won that nine times as well. The championships are good, like, you know, the World Series and all those things, but I think those one-off races, and sometimes you win them with a bit of luck. You know, the guys had a tyre issue or something like that, and you've been running second on the race, but. I think when you, you win that many, it's the, it's the team obviously, it's not the engine, but you work with those good teams like Triple Eight and some of our sprint car customers like said, Monty Motorsport and all those people, McFadden and those guys, it helps build our business because you've got good, good race teams to work with. Now I hear um, the driver might be floating around, so maybe if we can find him, I'd love to yeah, ask him about actually what goes on he can talk when about he's what sitting goes in there, yeah. hanging off the steering wheel. Yeah, brilliant. Well, so I'm here with Ryan who actually drives the sprint car. Now Ryan, 
How long have you been racing for and uh, tell me what was it like the first time you jumped in and drove something that's 900 horsepower and 600 kilos? Yeah, yeah, I haven't been racing for too long, you know, this is my fourth season now, so um, you know, I've only really done three seasons in, in this car uh, and then three seasons in a, a smaller category in the Formula 500, so not a whole lot of, lot of laps, but um, you know, every lap counts in this thing, it's, it's the more laps you do, the better you feel and the more comfortable you feel. And, um, yeah, it was a weird feeling, uh, you know, and it's sort of only recently realised, you know, the harder you drive it, the easier it gets. Uh, it's as simple as that. So, you know, when you're not aggressive on the wheel and the throttle, it's quite difficult to drive this thing. But, um, yeah, you pick it up eventually, but it's, it's probably like a five-year apprenticeship. Probably takes about five years to get somewhat good at it. And how would you explain to somebody just off the street knowing that, you know, people would say, oh, yeah, 900 horsepower is a lot. What does it feel like when you actually get into it? And yeah, it's 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 a crazy feeling. Um, I almost feel safer in one of these than what you do with the road car, surprisingly enough. By the time you're fully strapped in, uh, you don't move a lot and you're very tight. Um, but just the throttle response when there's you know, grip on the track, is it's incredible. It's a feeling, it's hard to explain. And uh, especially at the start of the night when you haven't kind of warmed in and you get straight on the throttle, you know, it takes a while for your, your vision to come too because you're moving that quick. But um, yeah, it's a crazy feeling. It's definitely enjoyable um, once you're in control of the car. And I guess, um, yeah, to finish up though, what would you um, explain to people that are thinking about getting into Speedway? I mean, what, what would you suggest they do to, as a starting point? Yeah, I think definitely watching a lot of other races and, and, you know, you even start a little notebook, you know, write down certain things you see and whatnot and you see a trend on how they drive and, and how the track goes from there and then start in a smaller category, you know, for those first couple of years and just get an idea for what it's like to be on dirt, you know, um, it's, it's a different concept to being on the road. so. Once you get your head around that, um, then you know you need to. Uh, I think is social media is another good thing. Um, you know you need to respect the sponsors that are putting in their time and effort in, into your uh, equipment and, and your racing. So you look after them. You know start to build a bit of a profile for yourself, and then uh, yeah, do a lot of learning behind closed doors. You know learn, learn, and then um, just go out there and just cut laps, get some laps in whatever you can in this concept before you can eventually move up. Cool. And I guess um, how do people find out about you and your racing? Yeah, so uh, Ryan McMahon Racing on Facebook and then Ryan uh, M-A-C-K 88 on Instagram. So I'm pretty active on those and anyone shoots me a question, you know, I'll respond uh, and I'm pretty open with that kind of thing and um, just like to have fun and treat people with respect and uh, yeah, should be good. Get out there and go fast. That's it. <laughs> awesome, thanks for your no time. No worries, all good. Cheers.